triage technique uh, utilizing the new Blonde AF. You guys excited? I will not be throwing out bleacher developers, <laughs> just so you know. No one's going to get hurt today. We're not going to make it powdery in the sky, so. Cool. Casey, what are you up to today? What's up, guys? Y'all awake yet? So I really wanted to showcase some of our new uh, Neon Electrics that are launching in uh, about a week and a half or two. Um, so I'm doing a really bright neon yellow all over, and I wanted to show off some, obviously, I love rainbow hair if anybody knows me, so I'm going to be doing some of that throughout, too. Um, the sectioning that I'm doing right now is a really cool way to incorporate um, rainbow hair in if someone's not too sure of it or doesn't want it all over. So if you guys will like this. Right on. And we have Hair Princess Steph right over here in front of me. She just came off our stage and right onto this stage. What are you up to today, Steph? So we are doing some sand art with the new Neon Electrics. Um, I like to take these real small sections. It's really artistic. There's not a huge amount of sectioning. And I like to base it with the smoke. Right on. Cool. That's it. we got a lot of good canvases to work on right now, right? Yeah. All right, Ruby, why don't you tell them a little bit about Blonde AF. Um, and, while, and then you guys can kick it back and forth. And then I'm going to be throwing out shit. That's my, that's my job here. So. He's really excited about that. <laughs> so, guys, Blonde AF is a new lightener coming out from Pulp Riot. It, uh, just like our fashion color line, it, too, is powered by Quinoa, making it more of a gentle, more conditioning lightener than some of the ones that are out there and we're utilizing already. Um, yes. Oh, I was like, oh, thanks, guys. Make some noise, y'all. <laughs> so, it's a little bit of a finer grain, like the actual lightener itself. So it's a softer, finer powder. That's one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and go ahead and mix this on stage for you guys. You guys can see that. I will say it's absolutely imperative that you utilize the mixing suggestions that are on with the directions of it. So for her today, I'm going to be doing a combination of foils and uh, mesh strips, if you guys are familiar, um, utilizing six volume and 30 volume. You guys can see how that's all going to go together, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Cool. Oh. Oh. Has everyone used uh, Blonde AF yet? Who got it? Anybody? Hell yeah. Good to hear. <laughs> What do you guys think? Good? Yeah? yeah it's really cool because uh, you can use it multi-purpose. You can use it for balayage. You can use it on the scalp. You can use it in foils. So it's really great to, um, you know, have a bleach like that that's, you know, multi-purposeful and you don't have to worry about having nine different bleaches laying around. <laughs> All right, so what we got going on here, guys, I want to show you. Look how we've got the smoke. It, I drop it right on these other colors, right? It's not going to transfer. I'm not going to get spotty, and that's one of my favorite things. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these small sections. I'm melting multiple colors on each one, and every two sections I'm taking one big section of smoke so that those neons can play off of that when we dry her. I, don't, I want it to be blendy, but I don't want it to be too blendy. Steph, when you're formulating smoke, did you just use smoke straight up or did you put anything in it? No. Okay, let me tell you, smoke's one of my favorites. I use it all the time, but it's blue-based, and it is blue-based because you have to pick blue or green. So if you pick blue, it mixes better with other colors. So the Pulp Riots is blue-based. So what I like to do to get a true slate gray is I add lemon and a little bit of fireball, and that makes it that dark slate where you look at it and you're just like, wow, that's a great gray. Yeah, I um, my favorite formula for smoke, um, you guys know when you're like doing color melts and you're like, okay, well, I need to find a root base that's really going to go with all these colors. So what I started doing is adding a little bit of velvet into the smoke, and that's actually you're able to melt more colors into that purpley tone because of that blue in the smoke. So that's a really good uh, tip for you guys if you wanted to... Um, you know, use that as your color belt base. Also, it's a beautiful color, so why the hell not? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and get into my technique really quick, you guys. I wanted to show you guys, obviously, my beautiful Asian girl. We did this yesterday, and this is pre-toned. You guys can see all through here. Yeah, it's got some honeyness and some warmth, but nothing that can't be toned and essentially rocked just the way it is. Ultimately, I love to do blonding techniques like this because it's not the traditional global lightning that we're so familiar with with fashion color. By taking my time and doing a more interesting lightning process and taking more attention to the lightning process, I know when those fashion colors inevitably fade out, what she's gonna be left with is something beautiful. If she's not a hot spotted blonde mess underneath it, 
she's gonna be gorgeous as it, as it fades, right guys? So you guys can see all through here how this happened and it's really awesome. It's kind of got a balayage, but this is 100% a foiling technique. So just starting really quick, I wanted to talk to you guys about what I'm gonna do around her face line first. Always struggling, right? We always struggle with the perfect power pieces, money pieces, you know, insert what you wanna say about that here. So for this technique, I've gone ahead and done three slices back to back. You're gonna see me when I do it. First slice is and I'm sorry, let me rewind. Any foils that you guys see me putting in that go to the scalp is six volume. Anything that's on the ends can be 30 volume. Why? Because a balayage ultimately is a gradient effect, right? Slightly darker at the root, getting lighter on the brighter on the ends. So anything towards the face, remembering that I use that six volume uh, formula. So I'm gonna do slices, three slices back to back. First slice, paper thin. First slice to the scalp. Second slice is going to be buffed an inch away from the scalp. Third slice is gonna be buffed two inches away from the scalp, and that's gonna lay in that perfect money piece for me. And then you're gonna see what I'm gonna do as I connect everything together. All right, guys? Yes. So um, I wanted to talk to you guys real quick about uh, the canvas. So when we're painting with Paul Bryant, we need to make sure that our canvas is accordingly. If we're putting blue on top of a yellow canvas, it's gonna turn green, right? So for yellow, uh, specifically, if it's an actual yellow base, yellow is gonna be brighter, right? Lemon is gonna be brighter, Firefly is gonna be brighter. So um, make sure that you guys know that when you're doing um, doing yellow, yellow is a great base for it. It doesn't need to be that white, you know? <laughs> I'm still waiting for someone to come in and ask me for all yellow. Like a what? All over all yellow. yellow. You don't you don't ask, you tell them. Yeah. That's how that works. <laughs> I'm uh I'm not so nice as the other girls. Iris always huh. asks her models, What do you want to do today? What colors don't you like? I'm like, you're gonna get rainbow. Every <laughs> model I'll go, What colors would you prefer not to? And Alexis knows, you guys know my Alexis, and so she'd be like, that's cute. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, you thought you had it. You enough. go learn to take girl. <laughs> <laughs> so as you guys can worry, see, I do this more artistically. I've done part of this side to her part. I'm gonna move to the back now. That's the way that I felt like going. So what we're doing is we're starting again with mixing opposite colors. Let me show you guys. I don't wanna have too much pink or too much blue or any other color too close together because when I curl this and when I brush it out or if it's straight, you're gonna see this beautiful blend and then this one chunk of color. And you're gonna be like, oh, darn. And when I do this, and one of my favorite things about pulp is how easily I get to spread it. So what's the worst thing? When you do a whole head of Vivids and you rinse it out and you're drying it and you're seeing these hollow spots, these blonde spots, and you're like, oh, come on. Now you're trying to hide them. Maybe they won't see them there in the back. So it makes it really easy to apply. And then you can just go like this and see it. And it because it moves so nicely on the hair, it makes my life easier and it makes me do my applications faster in the salon. So how are you keeping those from bleeding together? I can just drop it right on there. It pulp encapsulates if it's been a little bit. So by the time we rinse her out, this is gonna be a little hard. We did this about 45 minutes to an hour ago on, at the booth. And look, I just drop it there. It's not gonna transfer. It just stays where it's supposed to go. And in the salon, I don't have an assistant. So when I go to rinse, if I've got yellow and then I've got blue, when I go to rinse it, I don't have anyone holding the pieces. I have to rinse it all together. I do. One of my favorite analogies <laughs> is a wet sponge. You guys have heard me say it before. So think about a, a sponge, right? If it's already been fully filled with water or liquid, it can't uptake any more liquid. Mm -hmm. So as long as you're laying those pieces on already filled pieces of, of, of hair, if you will, you don't have to worry about that as long as you're not mushing them together. Don't get aggressive. You know, take it easy. Take don't get aggressive. Which is really great for messy people like me mm. because I'm flying shit everywhere. Everything's yeah, flying all over the place. So, you know, it's really great to have a color line where I can work with and have to worry about it. <laughs> yeah. Easy, messy. I'm so messy. I'm <laughs> all artists are, right? Yep. So really quick, you guys, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about real quick my choices of foil or hair separations, if you will. So we're familiar with, with nowadays we're familiar with mesh strips, we're familiar with foils. So I'm utilizing those mesh strips on any of those pieces that I want that color to go closest to the scalp because I'm not trying to incubate and make it go higher. Does that make sense, guys? So it's, you know, getting that gradient lift again. So I'm gonna be utilizing those mesh strips to help ensure that I don't bump that too high. And then I'm gonna be working into some foil work on the pieces that are gonna be lightened towards the end. Does that make sense? So think about using your tools to help aid and create a different look for you also. One of the really cool things about Pulp Right is we literally do this stuff 
in the salons. Like, you guys aren't coming here and learning some crazy collection that David created for us. They're allowing us as artists to come here and teach you guys things that will actually help you go back to the salon on Tuesday and make more money. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest things that people think is how am I going to section this? How am I going to create what they're creating on Instagram? And I think the biggest thing that I do is don't worry about that shit. Just look at the hair, get a vision, and just go at it. Don't worry about placement. Don't worry about it. Just use your brain and vision it. Woo. Yeah. So I want to show you guys one of my favorite things is to custom formulate on the actual strand. So there's no purple neon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Nirvana. I'm going to go a little bit farther down here. And then I'm going to take Candy, which we're all named by Miss Casey O. Yes. And I'm going to go and meet that blue. When I blend it right on the strand, you're going to start to see that there's a purple coming out and how nicely that blends. So I just made the color on the strand, and it gives me a bigger palette to be able to work with. I literally just got excited because this is the first time I've seen neons on Emily's hair. I know. Oh, my like, God. Oh, my God. Yeah. You guys don't know how big this is. You're welcome. You're welcome. And not just pastels. Well, they're still light, right? <laughs> no. Yeah, they're still so light. So okay. Ooh, girl, you can be so cute tonight. <laughs> the way we come up with the names of our products is we have all the artists submit names um, from our team. <laughs> and so they all submit names. We probably have a hundred of them at that point. And somehow everyone that Casey submitted was picked. <laughs> And it was not intentional. She's good at naming stuff. Yeah. So if you need you guys want me to name, me your, to name your child, yeah. go to her. Like, uh, I literally kids, will be all kinds her. of weird shit. I'm going to name my kids like Zelda, you know, video game <laughs> things. Link. I text her, Casey, please name this for me. And like right. two seconds later. Yeah, if you guys want me to so name your work, that. please text me. Um, <laughs> maybe DM me because that's a lot of texting. But um, I'll totally name it for you. Oh. Um, if you guys know our neons coming out, like I was mentioning, we have five. Um, the neon green is Area 51. Neon blue is Nirvana. Neon pink is candy. I'm going to stop saying neon everywhere. You get the idea. <laughs> um, orange is lava, and yellow is firefly. Guys, how cool is it that a company lets you put in ideas for the names of the colors? Right. Right? right? Hell yeah. They're pretty awesome. Yeah. They're pretty oh, awesome. They're, they're all right. I think we'll keep them. I didn't even get asked. I just texted David. Like, I have ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even originally asked to know. Casey's just crazy. I, I figured her out. Like, I am like, the really greatest moment is knowing that these are people that I've looked up to and idolize and continue to do so, even though I know them in real IRL, right, guys? IRL. And um, Casey is just one of those. I'm just like, why is she so, I always am fascinated and I'm always completely motivated by the way she does her social media and the way, be, beyond other things. But I'm just like, how the hell? And then she's like, dude, I play video games. I was like, yeah, that's how she does. That's where a lot of my color names came from. She's so good. Something I'd like everybody to understand, too. Everybody knows kind of the people who are on our team. What I think people don't understand is none of them are getting paid to be social media influencers. It's kind of revolting to me how that's kind of all come about. Um, truly, rather than pay somebody to like our brand, we find people that like our brand, and we find ways for them to work to earn money. That's what they're here doing today. So it's a little different way of flipping Hell yeah. Out. David, I think they need some color. Don't they need more color? What do you need? No, they need more yes! color. Oh, they need more color. Yes! Yeah! Cool. I'm good. I got we'll, lots of color. We'll I got a couple neons. Yes. Neons. Neons. Y'all better get size. We don't even have all the neons. Woo! 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 You. I release. <laughs> I tried. Goodies. Has everybody had their Starbucks today? <laughs> yeah, okay, that's good. I just want to make sure I check in. So you guys can see I'm still just doing my power piece around the face. Nothing. I could use some more if anyone would like to bring it to the Paul Bryant booth later. <laughs> Give me some champagne. A little champagne. Mimosa. Yeah, a mimosa. I love the way you say mimosa. It's hilarious. I know, I say shit weird, right? Yeah, well, you know. I have a confession to make. Generally speaking, when we do a stage show, right before the show, we all do a shot of whiskey. Yeah. This morning, it just felt too early to do. So we're all completely non-whiskey in us. We got Starbucks flowing through us. I had like two sips of Jay's beer, so 
truth about it. Completely sober? Yeah. You guys are. I came late. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> That's what you're doing? <laughs> Mind you, we had Jack Daniels at 10 a.m. last time, so I'm not really sure why this was too early. <laughs> okay, I will talk about something. Okay, so guys, here we go. I got my money piece set in, right? I have already subsectioned her. I did three quadrants before today's show, obviously, so you guys can see. So starting around the face, now I've already got those money pieces lined in. I'm going to do diagonal back. Typically when I'm doing, if anybody knows anything that I call a surging technique, this is kind of like a playoff of that. Uh, I will utilize typically doing a diagonal up, giving me kind of that power piece right there. But because I've already laid in those three foils in the front, I don't need to worry about the connective pieces if that, if you, if that makes sense at all. So I'm going to do a diagonal back instead because that's going to give me a really nice sheet and frame of color around here. Does this make sense? As I go up the head, I'm going to do kind of like a zigzag placement that's going to help give me those ribbons that are going to go to that scalp without having an overly highlighted effect or traditional foil effect. And then I'm going to be doing a push ombre in the in-between. I like really great strong combs and it's fun and it's a good idea for you to go ahead and load up your tray when you're going to do a technique like this with different combs because you don't know how that client's hair is inevitably going to react to the teasing if you will right does that make sense guys you guys get those girls and you're like well that didn't do shit <laughs> so if you guys have different combs you know that you can play with that and you're going to get a varied uh packing as well with that teasing it's like using your teeth yeah so one of the things that i'm doing with emily here because of the neons if you guys can see here let me move this i'm making big panels of the smoke so I just want to show you guys that I'm doing it in the back as well, every couple sections, just so I can really highlight how great these are going to be. So we transfer that all the way throughout the entire head. Hey, Steph, is there any color that you won't blend into your root base that you have going on right now? Or everything goes with that? Everything. Everything goes? That's why, I, that's why I use it so much. I blend everything. Even the yellow, I can blend into it once I've neutralized it. It's... I love blending it, but that's why I'm going section by section and doing the root color. I'm not going to base the whole thing. I want to have a good blend, and I want to do that while the product is still wet. So I'm going every section, I'm doing her base, and I'm melting then. Because by the time I got to this section over here, it would make my life a little bit harder to try and blend that in. So the two customer service questions we get the most. By the way, I think people get really excited when they see the finished product and they just want to dive in, which is a good thing. But our customer service questions are pretty crazy. I can't tell you how many people have mixed developer with our color, put it in the hair, and couldn't oh, no. figure out why it didn't work well. <laughs> um, the, so the first one is always has to do with the undertone of the hair. And we touched on that, but that's the most important thing. Sometimes people buy our color and they think it's like nail polish. It just goes on and covers everything. You truly have to take into account what's the canvas look like. Number two is how long does it last? That's a question we get all the time. And I always say that's exactly the wrong question. The question is how long does it fade? Yeah. Because I'll tell you what, our color is meant to fade. It's called semi-permanent color. So the difference between Pulp Riot and the other color lines out there is that there's the vibrant period, in which case our color is more vibrant, but then there's the fading period. After about being in the hair for about two weeks, it starts to fade. And the key is that our color fades beautifully. If the greens don't fade muddy, the pinks don't fade salmon, it fades into pastel versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times the fades even better than the original. So you should prepare your clients for that. And you should also, there's certain things you can do to make the vibrant period last longer and the fading period last longer. Casey, why don't you tell them some secrets to keep longevity of the color? So freeze your clients initially. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like to. I torture the hell out of my clients even if I don't listen to it myself. Um, you want to give them brain freeze from the outside in. Um, also for home care, no super hot hell showers, you know. Make sure they're using a little cooler water. Um, cleansing conditioner is my favorite. Sulfate free, I feel like, is never actually fucking sulfate free, you know. <laughs> There's nine derivatives on the back of it that says a different kind of sulfate. So cleansing conditioner, cooler water, um, that's a great way to keep you. Also, you know, the dry shampoo every day of the week, obviously. Just do not wash your hair, okay? Do not wash your hair with vivids. Never. Don't wash your hair. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Can I show you guys this? We did Emily's hair at ABS back at the end of March. We did pastels. I didn't bleach this. I bleached her roots. I haven't touched this. This is what she faded to. And that's white. We didn't tone it. Nothing. So that's how great they fade. So real quick, if you guys want to see, just the last thing. You guys saw how I did 
So I'm gonna clip this mesh strip. That's what makes these strips really cool because you can clip them out of the way like that. I'm gonna take that entire chunk of hair. You guys can see how big that is. I'm gonna elevate it because just like a layered haircut, right? If you elevate, it's going to lay diffuse, correct? So it makes a lot, it takes a lot of the hard part of your workout. So again, elevating my subsection, making sure there's no gnarled in it. I'm gonna bring my hands to the tip of her hair and I'm going to push from here down instead of going in through here. My goal is to do the least amount of strokes in that back combing uh, to create what I need to do. The more teasing that you do, the more of a nightmare it is at the shampoo bowl. We all know those moments, right? <laughs> Even though it's the most seamless blend you could possibly make, it still can be a bit of a nightmare. So lastly, to help mediate that, I'm gonna use some sort of a prep spray, a conditioning spray of sorts. After I've teased it and applied my lightener, I'm gonna spray that all the way into that root packing. So it's gonna help to slip that back out, but it's also gonna help in case as you're back brushing, you guys are seeing me back brush that lightener right into all that teased hair. It's gonna help keep any spotting or any over processing at that point too, right? Is that not one of those like aha moments? Again, an amazing concept and idea from Alexis that I stole and I just use it on stage now. Thanks. <laughs>